Support for Financial Grown Up with Bobby Rebel and the following message come from TransferWise, the cheaper way to send money abroad built by the brains behind Skype. TransferWise takes a machete to the hefty fees that come with sending money abroad. So don't get stung by a bad exchange rate or sneaky fees. Join the 2 million people who are already saving with TransferWise. Test it out for free at transferwise.com slash podcast or download the app. It is the wise way to send money. He looked at me and he said, you know, Anne, you don't go into journalism to get rich. I was so stung. I wasn't asking to get rich. I just wanted to pay my bills. You're listening to Financial Grown Up with me, certified financial planner, Bobby Rebel, author of How to Be a Financial Grown Up. And you know what? Being a grown up is really hard, especially when it comes to money but it's okay. We're going to get there together. I'm going to bring you one money story from a financial grown-up, one lesson, and then my take on how you can make it your own. We got this. Hey, everyone. So this episode is going to be a treat and perfect for anyone who feels they could, and let's face it, should be earning more money. You may have a boss you need to convince, or you may have your own business and need to figure out how to charge your clients more and grow your business. Anne Choquette is a big name. She first became famous as the editor-in-chief of Seventeen Magazine and was named by Forbes to be one of the most powerful U.S. fashion magazine editors. More recently, she penned The Big Life and started a badass babes community. And being a badass herself, she also has an amazing TED Talk called Why We Should All Be More Millennial, which brings us to the advice she is going to share because it is about using that idea to get paid more money. Here is Anne Choquette. Anne Choquette, you're a financial grown-up. Welcome to the podcast. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. Congratulations on your massive bestseller, The Big Life, and more recently, your TED Talk, which I've now watched a number of times. You are literally the Jane Goodall of millennials, so I'm so excited to be talking with you. Thank you. I have devoted my career to understanding millennials and to supporting them and to helping them find their power. Which brings us to the money story that you are going to share, which really has to do with trading money for meaning at work because of the importance really of of meaning because we spend so much time at work. So when I was sort of mid-level editor coming up in the world, just past the stage of eating ramen and scrounging and going to happy hours to have dinner where I had I had some experience under my belt and a little bit of a salary. I was creating new content for my company and doing great innovation and I wanted to get paid more. And I remember I walked into my boss and I came in with a list of things that I had achieved. I'm no dummy. You know, so you, you were come prepared. In these, right. These, <laughs> these, right. It wasn't entitlement, right? I was prepared for this conversation and he looked at me and he said, you know, Anne, you don't go into journalism to get rich. And I was so stung. I wasn't asking to get rich. I just wanted to pay my bills. And frankly, I wanted to get paid for the work I was doing and for the, for the good work that I knew I was bringing them. And I, I remember feeling instantly small, oh. right? As if I had asked for too much or I had, my ambition was too obvious. And I, and I didn't, I, I backed off my request. I felt small. I retreated. He made me feel like I should feel lucky to be in that position. And maybe it's true, right? It's a competitive world that we're in. But you had worked for that position. I mean, yes, many other people would love to be in that position, but you had earned it and you were working. And probably the worst part is I loved my job, right? I really did. And he knew it. I loved my job. I was engaged. I was doing good work. I was doing work I felt was meaningful. I was on my path to finding what felt like my purpose, right? I was I was doing something real. And he used that to make me feel small in a salary negotiation. And I didn't go for the big dollars and I didn't push hard and I backed off immediately. And could I do it all over again? I might have left that meeting, gone back to my desk, right? And then come back with a nuts and bolts. Here's what other people are making in my position. I, I, it, it, it was at a time where, frankly, we didn't have glass door, right? We didn't have a million ways to check our salary. So I didn't know what other people were making. Well, was it that other people were making more or that they were just paying you very little? We don't really know, I I guess. We don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But had I had the resources available that we have today, right? And had I had the benefit of greater perspective on the world, 
um, I would have taken that moment and figured out how to get paid what I thought I deserved at that time. I would have really pushed for it rather than feeling small and retreating. So now we are years later. You are the voice for so many millennials. You are teaching them so much. What is your lesson from this that you would share to them if they find themselves in a similar situation? Knowledge is power. So if you know what other people at your level in your company who sit next to you in the competitive company are making, then you have a much greater leverage to get paid what you deserve. Women say to me all the time, I just want to get paid what I'm worth. And I'm like, that's great. Except for how do you know what you're worth? And the only way to know is to share your salary information. If, if you right. walk away from this interview right now with only one thing, is share your salary information with a trusted colleague, someone who sits next to you, your regular lunch buddy, but share your salary information. It's, it's not gratuitous. It's not for gossip purposes, but it's so that you know and are better prepared when you go into your own salary negotiation. So sticking to this theme for your money tip, you've talked about sharing your salary information, but are there specific ways and specific resources that you can tell people about that can accomplish this goal? Because it's a little bit awkward to just go up to people and say, oh, hey, tell me what you're making and I'll tell you what I make and it'll be all good. I mean, how do you actually, is there, are there certain things that you look for with someone that you feel you could trust them? Are there websites you can go to? Are there chat groups? Specifically, how does this happen? Because it, it's awkward, right? It is awkward. And I'll tell you, the first time that someone asked me to ballpark my salary for them, it came in an email. And was it a close friend? Was it someone you knew well? It was a colleague, not okay. a close friend. It was a colleague. And um, we had been supportive of each other over the years. And at first, I was so shocked. I was like, can you believe the nerve of this woman? I would never share my salary information with her. And I calmed down and tried to get a little perspective. And I gave her some sort of halfway information that she might be able to use. I didn't go all the way. In writing. Uh, I did. I, okay. I emailed her back in writing. However, if I did it again, I would 100% ballpark and tell her the number. I was so stung by it, but I realized she was so ahead of the curve in even asking. And the... You know, I have since um, been in a position to help other women where I talk about, um, you know, I've talked about uh, getting what I got paid and about the ins and outs of my book deal, right, to help other women in getting their book deal. I have had women who have helped me as I've been bu building a speaking practice, women who've been tremendously supportive because it's all brand new. You know, one of the things about having careers that are more complicated and more evolved than we ever planned for is that suddenly you're being thrust into totally new arenas and you have to figure out how to take the skills that you have, but make them work in new places and in new ways. How do you do that unless somebody gives you the lay of the land? And so that's another piece of this sisterhood, right? This idea that we should all support each other so that we can rise together as women and be collaborative and powerful. And how do you know, I mean, just to be specific about this, I mean, how do you know when it's okay to trust somebody or do you try to, you're comfortable doing it in email. You don't feel you have to pick up the phone or meet someone in person. I think when you're talking real numbers, I think it's okay to send an email that says, hey, can I talk to you about this? I'm interested in finding out what you charge or how you got paid or how the deal went down in an email, right? To be clear about what it is that you're asking them. But then to have the real nuts and bolts money conversation in person, I think is a probably smart, right? That's how the last couple of conversations that I've had have gone. But I think it has to be someone you trust, right? Who's not going to feel competitive, someone who's going to give you good, smart information. And I think that you find those people in your network, right? Maybe they're not someone who sits next to you at work, right? Maybe it's not your work wife, although it, you probably should share some of this information with your work wife. But it is people who who are going to be in your life for a while, right? You're going to see them at right. industry events. You're going to be up for the same jobs. You're going to see them schmoozing here and there. You're going to see what do you do if you find out that there's a big disparity? I think the only thing to do, I mean, yes, maybe it's awkward with the two of you, but I think it, it's better to say, now you know, and now you can go to your boss and let them know that, that you know, and to be clear. I mean, the sort of most 
one of the most interesting things about this transparency that millennials have brought into the world is that Gen Xers are so supremely uncomfortable with it, right? We're like, we think it's TMI and that you're, it's oversharing and that the system, you know, sort of old systems are set up to keep you in line and to keep you not knowing. And those don't really serve us moving forward. The transparency that millennials are demanding is going to become second nature for all of us. And so I think it's a smart company that honors this kind of transparency rather than shuts it down. Well said. All right, Anne I know that you are so busy on the speaker circuit and with all of your projects. Tell us more about what you're up to these days and where people can find you. So since the TED Talk, Why We Should All Be More Millennial, I have actually been doing a ton of speaking. It is, in so many ways, a love letter to millennials, to a generation that I believe is going to lead our future and is changing the way we define power and success. But it's also incredibly important for boomers and Xers. And there's this real tension at work between boomers and Xers and the the millennial employees that are coming up behind them. And it is my goal to make everybody come together so that we can rise together as women. So where can people find you? com is the best, fastest way to find the big life, to find my (laughs) speaking, to find my TED Talk. Which is awesome, by the way. And on social media? com on Instagram, Ann.Showket on Facebook, Ann Showket on Twitter. You can find me everywhere. I'm very easy to find. A-N-N-S-H-O-K-E-T. Awesome. Thank you so much. This has been amazing. Thank you, Bobby. I love it. I love how direct Anne was. I feel there were a lot of takeaways, but this is what I'm going to focus on. Financial grown-up tip number one, create networks and career allies to share pay and career information. But this is what I'm adding. Treat it kind of like any successful relationship in that you need to respect the boundaries and you also need to respect that even though you're being transparent with each other, that doesn't mean that the information goes beyond that relationship. You need to respect the other person and their privacy. Be sure to vet someone also before you reveal too much and keep the information that is said between the two of you or the group private unless it is clearly agreed that it is for public disclosure. Anne and I have shared career information and goals, but that remains private. Financial grown-up tip number two. When you have these conversations, Anne points out that while you can initiate via email, you should have the real conversation in real life, in person, face-to-face. Meeting in person is worth the time. At the very least, do it by phone. On your end, you don't want to create a paper trail with information that you don't want to go beyond the intended recipient. No matter how well-intentioned they are, things happen. Be secure with your information. Okay, the minute this podcast is over, I want everyone to go listen to Anne Choquette's TED Talk, Why We Should All Be More Millennial. I will leave a link in the show notes. Then check out her book, The Big Life, and follow her on social media. I want to hear your bunny story and get some great money tips from you, our listeners. We are going to be starting having one episode a month be a listener as our guest. If you want to be considered, email us at info at financialgrownup.com and tell us what money story, lesson, and money tip you would share. Thank you all for your support. If you like what you are hearing, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any upcoming episodes. And of course, rate and review the show, especially on iTunes. Anywhere is good, but especially iTunes so more people can learn about the show. And on that note, please share this with a friend so we can share these stories with more people and help them live richer lives. Follow me on Twitter at Bobby Rebel, on Instagram at Bobby Rebel one Learn more about the show at bobbyrebell.com forward slash financial grown up podcast. I adore Anne and I hope you do now too. It was a great episode and here's to us all getting one step closer to being financial grown ups. Financial Grown Up with Bobby Rebel is edited and produced by Steve Stewart and is a BRK Media production.